This morning we are continuing our, our coverage on a busy election day. We have team coverage for you this morning with everything happening here locally and nationally. All right, and it is now 703 as we take a live look from two capital cities, Washington, D.C. and Austin. This morning, the vote count continues as election workers across the nation work to get final ballots tallied. Here's a look at one of the most controversial local races we've been following for you this morning, starting with the race for the White House. This morning, the Associated Press and CBS News are projecting that former President Donald Trump is now the president elect. As of now, the Trump Vance campaign is leading in both the Electoral College and in the popular vote. As for the Senate race here in Texas, Senator Ted Cruz has declared victory over Congressman Colin Allred with 53% of the vote. Now to the highly controversial HISD bond proposition. Prop A is projected to fail with 58% of voters rejecting $3.98 billion in bonds aimed at addressing the district's infrastructure needs. Prop B is projected to fail as well with 58% of voters deciding against upgrading the district's technology infrastructure. This would have set aside $44 million to improve tech across HISD campuses. Now, here are three big stories we're tracking this morning, starting with the balance of power in Congress. Right now, CBS News is projecting that Republicans will take control of the Senate. Plus, we're closely monitoring issues at voting centers nationwide. Bomb threats at several polling locations appear to originate from Russian email domains, according to the FBI. And finally, President Trump spoke with supporters last night, telling them he was not going to disappoint them. Help our country heal. We have a country that needs help, and it needs help very badly. We're going to fix our borders. We're going to fix everything about our country. And we made history for a reason tonight, and the reason is going to be just that. And now we know that former President Trump will return to the White House after CBS News projected wins in key battleground states. Vice President Kamala Harris is expected to address the nation later today from Washington, D.C., according to campaign officials. CBS News correspondent Jared Hill is at the White House with more. I think that we just witnessed the greatest political comeback in the history of the United States of America. Early this morning, the Trump Vance campaign claimed victory ahead of CBS News projection that former President Donald Trump will become the 47th president of the United States. This was, I believe, the greatest political movement of all time. There's never been anything like this in this country and maybe beyond. Speaking to supporters in West Palm Beach, Florida, he promised unity. It's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us. It's time to unite. And we're going to try. We're going to try. At Vice President Kamala Harris's alma mater, Howard University, supporters grew less enthusiastic. The crowd later dispersed after a top campaign official told them Harris would wait to address supporters and the nation later today. We will continue overnight to fight to make sure that every vote is counted. According to CBS News exit polls, the state of democracy was the biggest issue for Harris voters. When it came to Trump supporters, it was the economy. The Democratic ticket all the way for human rights. While he was the president, everything was nice and smooth, and I still had money left in my pocket. A vast majority of voters nationwide described the economy as bad after heading into the voting booth yesterday. Jared Hill. CBS News, Washington. All right, it's now 7.06. The world is waking up to the news that former President Trump is heading back to the White House. CBS News correspondent Leah Mishkin is in London with reaction from around the world. Uh, Donald Trump. President Trump. Donald Trump. The Donald Trump. The Donald it's the headline buzzing around the world. News of Donald Trump's presidential victory. A Trump win is what most Israelis were hoping for. I think it's good for Israel, yeah, no doubt. It's better than uh, Kamala Harris. Israel's prime minister called it history's greatest comeback and a new beginning for America. <laughs> Ukraine was also tracking results closely as it relies heavily on billions of dollars in U.S. military support. Trump has said he could end the war with Russia in 24 hours if elected. You're the president. Please do it, Mr. Trump. Ukraine's president congratulated Trump on a, quote, impressive election victory, words echoed by other world leaders like Britain's prime minister. 
But on the streets of London, Brits didn't hold back. I think the American people are bonkers. <laughs> I think no one's ready for Trump again, let's be honest. It would have been nice having a woman in the office. It's an election millions around the world were invested in, even though they didn't have a vote. Leia Mishkin, CBS News. And while the world wakes up to this news, the balance of power in the House is still yet to be determined. But CBS News has also projected that the U.S. Senate will flip to Republican control. That includes the race here in Texas after incumbent Senator Ted Cruz secured his victory over Congressman Colin Allred last night. Devon Roming is live outside election headquarters this morning where ballots are still being counted. And Devon, both candidates spoke last night. Yeah, Ron and Steph, good morning. Both candidates spoke very highly of each other during their speeches last night while not straying away from the focuses of their campaigns over the course of the last few months. Now, Senator Cruz has served in the Texas Senate since 2013 and defeated All Red after capturing 53% of last night's vote. Last night, he was joined by his family and supporters in downtown alongside Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg. Cruz took the time to thank his supporters while also thanking his opponent, Colin Allred, who he commended for running a, quote, hard fought campaign. Meanwhile, Congressman Allred was joined by his supporters in Dallas, and he, too, congratulated Senator Cruz on his victory while also thanking the women who were a huge part of his campaign's focus on reproductive rights. You have my word that I will fight for you, for your jobs, for your safety, and for your constitutional rights. There are so many brave Texas women who've told their stories, and Allie and I will never forget them, and we will never stop fighting to overturn this abortion ban here in Texas. Now, Cruz, who had a lead over All Red from the beginning of this race, spent much of his campaign focusing on border security, calling for stricter enforcement on illegal immigrants, while All Red, who out fundraised Cruz, centered his focus on reproductive rights and a bipartisan border security bill. Now, this Senate seat has been held by Republicans here in Texas since 1988. Live in Houston, Devon Rahman, KHOU 11 News. All right, Devon, thank you. And that brings us to the election board and how things were shaking out as far as the U.S. Senate race here in Texas. So we're taking a closer look at the reported vote totals in some of the biggest counties here we've been watching. That includes Tarrant, Harris, Fort Bend, Maverick County. I want to start with the race in 2018 where Cruz was still the incumbent, but he was against Beto O'Rourke, the Democratic opponent there. So take a look at the blue versus red on your screen. Now watch what happens and how Ted Cruz was able to secure his win for his third term. Let's go right here. This is 2024. Boom. You see quite a difference there, including in Maverick County, where Eagle Pass, Texas is. All right, Ron, we're going to send it back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Steph. Let's turn now to the race for Harris County District Attorney. That race is still too close to call. Both Dan Simons and Sean Tier both used to work for the district attorney's office. Simons is the Republican and he worked at the DA's office for three years before leaving in 2017 to open his own private practice. Tier is a Democrat. He was at the DA's office and left last year to work at a private firm. Uh, then he announced he was running for district attorney. Sean Tier defeated incumbent Kim Ogg during the primary earlier this year. He gave a brief speech last night. This race has been about you all from the very beginning. And we are going to fix that office. And we're going to fix that office with the help of so many people here. Atier went on to say that he'll give a bigger speech once the race is called. Both candidates acknowledge something needs to be done to deal with the current backlog of cases. Well, right now, the FBI is clearing up details behind several reported bomb threats at polling locations across the country yesterday. This is video of locations in DeKalb County, Georgia, and the Westchester, Pennsylvania area that were shut down and evacuated due to those threats. Now, the FBI says many of the threats appeared to originate from Russian email domains. But those threats led to officials to share even more warnings about what they say is a high level of foreign influence and disinformation. That includes videos that the FBI says are fake. 
The Bureau noted two instances of its name and insignia being used to spread misinformation about the presidential election. The two videos reportedly made false claims about voter fraud and encouraged people to vote remotely. Again, both videos and their claims are fake. Officials say they expect this kind of misinformation to continue beyond Election Day.